Dirty Dealings, Corporate Battles, Consumer Wars. This is Evening 5. Shares of glove manufacturers surged today, led by Harta Lega Holdings, after the U.S. Trade Representative announced last Friday that tariffs on Chinese gloves will be raised to 50% in 2025 and 100% the following year. Harta Lega hit limit up as it jumped 30% higher to 3 ringgit 14 sen. Top glove rose 32% to a high of 1 ringgit 21 sen, before pairing some gains at the closing bell to trade at 1 ringgit 14 sen. Sen. Supermax Corp jumped to 1 ringgit before settling at 93 sen, up 18%. Kosa and Rubber Industries rose as much as 26% to 2 ringgit 31 sen. It ended trading at 2 ringgit 25, still up by 23%. Also ending the day higher were the lower liners, including Comfort Gloves up 15% at 42.5 sen, Care Plus Group up 17% to 30.5 sen, and HLT Global up 11% to 15.5 sen. HLIB Research, which upgraded the sector to overweight, said in a note that with the US tariff hike and recent share price weakness, the risk-reward ratio has once again become favourable and the glove sector could regain market interest. Public investment banks separately noted that the higher tariffs are expected to narrow the price gap between Chinese and Malaysian gloves, improving the competitiveness of local players. Chinese gloves are currently priced at 17 to 18 US dollars per 1,000 pieces versus Malaysian gloves at 20 to 21 dollars. Supermax Corp aims to begin commercialising glove production at its first US manufacturing facility in Texas by January 2025. In a bars filing, the company said its subsidiary, US-based Maxter Healthcare Inc., will commence testing and commissioning of its first batch of production lines this December with commercialisation of glove production by next January. Supermax said the Phase 1 operation has a total production capacity of 4.8 billion pieces of gloves per annum. It expects to achieve half capacity by next year and the remaining capacity expansion in the fourth quarter of 2025. Based on analysts' compilation, Supermax's current annual production capacity is about 21 billion pieces of gloves. Some 29% of its total sales are to the US. Dato Sri Stanley Tai, the group's founder and executive chairman, said the U.S. plant incorporates a smart manufacturing process featuring digital process control and fully automated end-to-end -end manufacturing. This approach, he said, reduces the glove maker's reliance on blue-collar labor and leverages the latest technology, including artificial intelligence, automation and robotics. The company also has plans for phase two of its production to be installed within the next two years, subject to its monitoring of the global demand and consumption market. Intel Corp will delay the operations of a new plant currently being built in Malaysia as the world's largest computer chip maker grapples with declining sales and mounting quarterly losses. According to a note to employees from Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger, the company still plans to complete the construction of its new advanced packaging factory in Penang. However, it will align the startup with market conditions and increased utilization of its existing capacity. He notes that the Malaysia remains an active design and manufacturing hub through its existing operations. The expansion project involved investments of more than 7 billion US dollars, approximately 29.96 billion ringgit, when it was announced in 2021, at a time when the world was facing a shortage of chips on the back of the COVID-19 pandemic. The facility was expected to begin production this year and create over 4,000 jobs for Intel in Malaysia. Intel first opened its Malaysian manufacturing facility in 1972, the country is Intel's largest site outside of the US with some 14,000 employees.
Mini market chain operator 99 Speedmart Retail Holdings' potential inclusion in the FBM KLCI remains far from certain, even as its market capitalization now approaches the top 30. MIDF flagged that the stock does not qualify for fast entry as a new issue into the FBM index series based on current rules. The shares will also have to climb to at least 2 ringgit 41 sen to make it into the list by the review cutoff date on November 25th. As the 33rd largest stock in terms of market cap, it is likely to be included in the reserve list in the upcoming review. The semi-annual review of the FTSE Bursa Malaysia KLCI is scheduled to be implemented on December 23rd. The FBM Index series allows for a fast entry inclusion for a large newly listed stock if its market cap amounts to 2% or more of the full market cap of the FBM Emas Index. For now, MIDF said Gamuda may finally make it into the KLCI after staying in the reserve list for two years, which will mean gunting Malaysia's possible removal from the index. China-based Huawei Technologies Co. has obtained a summary judgment from the High Court against a Kulin-based mobile phone accessory company for infringing its trademark by selling counterfeit chargers, adapters and earphones on two popular mobile platforms. Judicial Commissioner Aslan Sulaiman granted leave for Huawei Technologies to enter the summary judgment on Wang chun Kiet, the sole proprietor of One Mobile 18 Accessories, which sells the items on Lazada and Shopee. The High Court ruled that Wong had failed to raise any triable issues to warrant denying Huawei Technologies application to seek the summary judgment. Aslan said Wong had interfered with Huawei Technologies trade and gave the injunction to restrain Wong or his agents from infringing 15 of the company's trademarks. He ordered Wong to hand over all infringing goods for the purpose of destruction within 14 days of the court order. Wong was also directed to surrender all documents, advertisements, invoices, purchase orders, sales records, contracts, bank statements, accounts, emails, electronic messages and social media accounts relating to the importation, distribution, sales and promotion of the products.